welcome to Breakthrough. Yes, today is Pentecost Sunday, the day we remember when God poured out his Holy Spirit on all believers in Jesus Christ. For the first time, in such a dramatic way and with such a dramatic effect. I hope you saw the notices running in the 10 minutes before this service started, asking us all to have bread and wine ready that we can share together as Jesus commanded us to do so, as we remember his giving of himself to us in that way. So let us remind ourselves what happened at Pentecost, as we find it in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that amazing day so many years ago when the Holy Spirit came in such dramatic fashion for all the believers then, enabling them, empowering them in the work of your kingdom. Father, as we remember today, we pray, pour out your spirit afresh on us as believers in Jesus Christ, your son today, as we worship now and as we go out from this time of worship together. Amen. And so filled with the Holy Spirit, we worship the only one who deserves our worship, God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
to the Father except by me. Thank you. 
belong to you. Lord Jesus, you called us to yourself, each one of us, whoever we are, whatever we have been up to and doing. Your arms are open wide on the cross for each one of us, this day and every day. Lord, we come to you today. We come to you now in worship to our Lord, that we might be restored in you and by you now. Amen. And we continue in worship as we sing 10,000 Reasons, led by its writer in Trafalgar Square, Matt Redman, led last year on Pentecost as part of the Thy Kingdom Come celebrations. We join the great throng of worshippers. Hey, you all lead this today, okay? Here we go. Bless the Lord. Yeah. 
its fate The end draws near And my time has come But still my soul will sing your praise Unending, yes Ten thousand years And then forevermore Oh, Jesus, on that day when my strength is faint, well, the end, the end draws near, and my time, my time has come. Jesus, still my soul was sitting. I get excited about Pentecost because this is the day that God fulfilled the prophecy in Joel by pouring out his Holy Spirit on all believers. And he still does so. Isn't that amazing and exciting? God gives his Holy Spirit to all believers. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the prophecy as Peter quotes it in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. With these words, Peter emphasises that the spirit's coming marks the inauguration of the end times. On that day of Pentecost, when the spirit came, in fact, the Spirit coming is what tells us that the end times have been inaugurated. Well, there's been quite a bit of discussion about the end times in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I don't want to spend time going there now. However, today underlines that we have been in these end times since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And in terms of what God is about, and when Jesus was, Jesus was quite clear about on all about the final things, he said to his disciples before he ascended into heaven, as we read in Acts 1, 7, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates of the fa the, that the Father has set by his own authority. And he immediately went on to say, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What is important about these end times, as Jesus was ascending into heaven, 
is that Jesus' followers, those who believe in him, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them. And, when, uh, and the when of the restoration of God's kingdom is not for any of us to know, but is something for us to be ready for, as Jesus tells us in the Gospels. So God sends, following Jesus' ascension, his Holy Spirit on all believers in this really dramatic way, with dramatic results. They speak in different languages, enabling all the multinational crowd there in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Peter is transformed and preaches the most amazing sermon. The most amazing sermon in human terms, but not in the power of the Holy Spirit. As Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, that is his transformation. And he's quite clear that all that they ha are seeing and hearing on that day, all the effects of the Holy Spirit is because of the death, resurrection and ascension of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Acts 2, verses 31 to 33. Seeing what was to come, he, that is David, spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. This Holy Spirit, all of you are witnessing through us at this moment, is because... Verse 36, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And Peter says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. Jesus died. Jesus is risen. Jesus is ascended. And the Holy Spirit is now poured out on all believers in Jesus. And poured out for a reason, as the video at the beginning of our service said to comfort us, to teach us, to guide us, to empower us. All things that Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would be about. And Paul in Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit himself testified with our spirit that we are God's children. We know we are God's children through faith in Jesus Christ. And the Spirit testifies, witnesses that to our spirits. Thanks be to God. I thought that first video had it right, because this comforting, this teaching, this guiding, this empowering of the Holy Spirit is to enable us, as it enabled the first followers of Jesus, to share the good news and to help others see and believe. The Holy Spirit coming in power on his people is to enable his people to continue Jesus' mission to the world. The work of the church. The church being the people of God. That is what we are. And that's what we are all called to do and to be. Disciples of Jesus with the mission of God as our focus. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. On Wednesdays, two groups of us have been looking at different passages in Acts. And reflecting different aspects of church with the prayer to see the church unleashed. These studies were put together for this year, uh, coming from spring harvest. So we have been looking at them exactly at the time that they were intended for. But no one knew the context that we would be in with the present COVID-19 pandemic and the closing of our church buildings. But God is speaking to us in the midst of this pandemic in this time, releasing us temporarily from our buildings to know church as his people. The church is the people of God, not its buildings. I'm not saying that I am not looking forward to the time when we can all be in our building, meeting physically together again. But let us listen, be listening to what God is saying to his people now. So back to our studies in Acts, when we have been reflecting on the church 
and how the church is called to be as his people looking at how they can be unleashed as family, unleashed as servant, unleashed in power, unleashed as herald, unleashed as organisation, unleashed as sign and unleashed as disciple. Firstly, unleashed as family. One of the areas of being church that is part of the underlying characteristics of breakthrough, we talk of the breakthrough family because that is what we are under God and through God and in the power of his Holy Spirit. In him, let us continue to build on what he has given us and is giving us, each one of us, as part of breakthrough. Church unleashed as family. Secondly, church unleashed as servant. For Jesus came to serve and has shown us the model of service. The early church was unleashed as servant to one another as they cared for one another, sharing with each other, supporting one another. The church unleashed as servant. The church unleashed in power. This is what today is about. The empowering of the Holy Spirit to be God's church and to God's church, to all the believers in Jesus Christ, not just then but now. And we on our own cannot be the church, but Jesus promised and God fulfilled that promise that we would not be left on our own. He has sent us the Holy Spirit to empower us in being followers of Jesus to empower us in the work of the kingdom. The early church saw miracles and signs of the kingdom as part of being church. When the study groups looked at this, we realised that we could talk of miracles today. Supernatural signs of the kingdom of God, not just in other places in the world, but in our own experiences of being followers of Jesus. As Breakthrough, we have had testimony to the supernatural power of God that comes through the Holy Spirit being given to all believers. The church unleashed in power. The church unleashed as herald. A herald proclaims the good news. The angels were heralds to the shepherds in the fields outside Bethlehem when Jesus was born. We sing... Don't we? Hark the herald angels sing at Christmas. As church, our calling is to be the herald of the good news of Jesus Christ, to be proclaiming his victory over sin and death and his bringing of life in all its fullness for all believers. The church unleashed as herald. The church unleashed as organisation. The church unleashed as organisation that allows the release of the mission of God. The reorganisation of the church in the early days we looked at when seven deacons were appointed to sort out the food distribution to the widows, to enable the apostles to continue with their first calling of the proclamation of the gospel. And Luke tells us that this reorganisation had the direct effect of enabling the church to grow further. The church unleashed as organisation. The church unleashed as, as sign, a sign that does more than just point the way, but is an example, an illustration, a visible emblem of Christ's presence in the world. That each one of us, as part of the church, the people of God, would be that sign. A sign that points others to Jesus. That's the church unleashed as sign. The church unleashed as disciple, as we'll be looking at next week. The church is a community of disciples, a group of people committed to journey alongside one another, learning from each other, encouraging and challenging one another. We are a people called to follow Jesus so closely, learning from all that he has shown us in his life, his death and his resurrection, that we will be covered, as it were, in the dust from his shoes. So the church unleashed as family, the church unleashed as servant, the church unleashed in power, the church unleashed as herald, the church unleashed as organisation, 
The church unleashed as sign. The church unleashed as disciple. All in the power of the Holy Spirit that God gives to all believers in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Saviour, who died, was raised again, and who ascended into heaven to be at God's right hand so that God would send his Holy Spirit. And today, this Pentecost day, we celebrate that gift of the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, we pray for further outpouring of that Holy Spirit to each one of us as believers in Jesus Christ. That as his church together, we may be unleashed and be the church he has called us to be in the power of the Holy Spirit. The result of the Holy Spirit at work through Jesus' believers that first day was that 3,000 new believers were added to that their number. On that day, Peter concluded, as I have already quoted, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. In other words, this Jesus we proclaim today is the Jesus who came to our world as a baby, who grew up in a human home, who taught about the things of God, who revealed the things of God through supernatural signs or miracles, who went willingly to the cross where he was put to death, carrying the weight of human sin, human disobedience to God, before being raised again on the third day, when he was resurrected victorious over all things, including death. This is what Peter was explaining to the crowd in Jerusalem that day. And Luke tells us that when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replies, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Each of us is called to do this. If you haven't as yet made that step of faith in Jesus, I urge you to do so today. To acknowledge your sin before God, as I've acknowledged mine and continue to acknowledge mine, and each one of us acknowledges ours. To repent, to say sorry and turn away from that sin in the name of Jesus Christ, accepting what he has done for you, for me, for us, in dying on the cross and rising again. Yes, Lord, I believe. And so I invite you to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins and for everything I know to be wrong. I know you are, sorry, I know that you gave up your life on the cross. I give my life back to you. I ask you to come into my life now as Saviour, Lord and Friend. Amen. And as Peter said, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that this promise, he said, is for you and your children and all who are far off. All whom the Lord our God will call. In other words, this promise is for each one of us. And each one of us who puts our faith in Jesus Christ receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. To comfort us, to teach us, to guide us, to empower us, to share the good news and to help others see and believe. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. May we as believers in Jesus know your gift afresh for each one of us today, filling us and overflowing through us, empowering each one of us to be the person you have created us and called us to be this day and every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so in thankfulness to God, we come to share bread and wine together, remembering that Jesus did so on the night before he died with his disciples in that upper room. We do so as we acknowledge where we have gone wrong before God, acknowledging our need for God's grace as seen in the death and resurrection of Jesus, his son, our Lord and Saviour. For the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so as we share bread and wine together, we listen and reflect with Joe's song, Have You Seen the Cross? on our album, Lord of the Battle. singing together the song Oceans, led for us by Joe, Phil and Anna.
worship today. I pray that you have felt God's presence during our time together through the power of his Holy Spirit. Do let me know if God has spoken to you and what he has said by emailing me at rector at kingsdowncreekside.co.uk or sharing on the Breakthrough WhatsApp group. I say every week and I say it again today. Thank you to those of you who have given to the Ministry of Breakthrough at Linstead Church. Please continue to do so. And if you haven't as yet done so in this time of not being able to do so physically, can I encourage you to go to the website as part of our worship together to give online via www.kingsdowncreekside.co.uk and then go to the giving page and following the instructions there. And for breakthrough, click on the button for Linstead Church. Thank you. And thank you for being here. And let's end our time together by praying for one another using the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you this day and each day.